lots of questions before we even start. Let's uh, let's get into this and see um, see what questions we might be able to answer. My name is Laura Benoit, and I am the director of the McDonald International Scholars Academy here at Washington University. And my colleague here, Latanya, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Latanya Valian, and I'm the program coordinator at the McDonald Academy. And the uh, two of us lead the admissions process here at the McDonald Academy. So we wanted to um, take a few minutes to go through some of the frequently asked questions that we that we get um, to try to help you complete your application or or decide if you're going to apply to Washington University and the McDonald International Scholars Academy. So let me share my screen and we'll go through a few slides. Um, ideally, we'll answer uh, a few questions inside of those slides. We do have the Q&A tool enabled this morning. So if you want to put things into the Q&A, we will be able to answer those um, either live or we'll answer them via, via the tool. Um, if it doesn't get answered right away, that likely means that it will be part of the presentation. So be patient. Pay attention. Be, be patient. So let me share my screen. Um, here we go. I'm going to share that. Okay, so I think I think we see what we we want to see. This is the uh, a picture of our crew the last time we were in Washington D.C. on one of our cohort trips, which which we'll talk about a little bit later. So again, welcome. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, for those of you just joining, my name is Laura Benoit, and I'm the director. Um, this session is our Q&A question and answer session about the McDonald Academy. Um, I do want to start with the, this sort of thought. Um, if you are interested in the McDonald Academy, you do need to do your application for a Washington University degree program that is eligible for the Academy. So that is almost, all, I think all of the PhD programs and most of the master's programs here at Washington University. Um, we will share a few links with you later so that you can go investigate, um, but you must have a, a fully completed application in with Washington University and a fully completed application with the McDonald International Scholars Academy in order to be considered. So if you try to apply for the academy and think that's applying you into a graduate program at Washington University, I just wanna caution you, it does not work that way. So let's get into a, uh, a little more detail. Ooh, let's see if I can advance my slide. Here we go. So the McDonald Academy is essentially has two main missions. One is to educate uh, students through leadership, cultural awareness, and communications being some of the, the areas that we lean into in terms of soft skills. And the other side is the research side. We try to foster collaborative international research. So at the, at the core of what we do, we wanna enhance the leadership capacity through mentorship, professional development, cultural experiences, and in unique engagements that are really um, only available to the McDonald Academy. Um, so this is, more than just getting your graduate degree in a specific discipline, this is sort of the soft skills that overlay, you know, what what it means to be a good leader in, in the modern day and age. Just a quick little overview. We do look for scholars from around the world, including the United States. So we, um, this map is just a quick representation of where some of our scholars are, are from. And you can see we have um, six of the, in, well, any inhabitable con continent, we have a scholar from there. It, it, you can't really, if you can't live on a continent, it's a little hard to be on that seventh continent. So we have 202 alumni uh, scholars, so scholars for life, 93 in-resident scholars. So those are, are the scholars here on Washington University's campus right now. We cover about 70 academic programs and more than 50 different international institutions. Um, this is 
a, a frequently asked question is what are the benefits? Why would I do this? So in addition to getting some of those soft skills developed that, that I briefly mentioned before, um, you do receive both financial and programmatic support. Uh, so depending on your program, you'll, you'll have a full tuition scholarship. You'll have a monthly living stipend, uh, annual travel and research allowance, cultural and leadership training. I talked a little bit about uh, that trip to, to DC is one of them. We actually had Sanjay Gupta, who is the medical correspondent for CNN, join us for lunch a few weeks ago. Um, all of our scholars get mentored by an individual faculty member and you become part of this global network of students and alumni from across countries and disciplines. Our support is for up to five years or the completion of your program, whichever comes first. So if you're in a two years master's program, you would you could get support for two years. If you're in a six year, so I'll answer this one. If you're in a six year PhD program, we support the first five years and your department supports the remaining one year. Um, our stipend works in conjunction with uh, any, any stipend offer you would get. So if you got a stipend offer from uh, the McKelvey School of Engineering and they have a, a specific stipend level, we will support uh, our portion of that. And then any additional portion will be provided from, from McKelvey. So they work in concert. They are not stacked on top of each other. Um, here are a few things I like to, I really do like to talk about this in terms of what the expectations are. The expectations really boil down to participation. We want to develop a community of scholars from around the world, from across disciplines to have really interesting and sometimes challenging conversations. The idea of building this worldwide network allows us to be able to pick up the phone at some point in the future and say, hey, I need to talk to a lawyer who happens to be from Australia. Oh, okay, well, we know somebody like that. They're in my network. I'm gonna pick up the phone and I, I'm gonna ask them the questions that I have because they're connected. So participation really is a big key. Some of the things that we do is we always do a welcome week to bring um, our newest cohort of scholars in with our existing scholars to get to know each other. And um, we always do a little bit of a, a skill building exercise during that. The first year scholars have a 13 week full semester seminar that is in that first fall semester that allows them to learn some broad based leadership concepts and also to develop their own cohort. You'll see each other, you know, once a week for 13 weeks. So it's it's a great way to create a baseline of um, community uh, inside your cohort. We have our uh, this in the actually the annual scholar, all scholar team building retreat, um, ongoing leadership workshops and lectures. So the Sanjay Gupta um, luncheon I talked about, he came and talked to us about his leadership journey inside of um, both his medical degree and then his journalistic degree, uh, monthly community building ses sessions, workshops and endowed lectures. Uh, we do in the second year, we do a, a communications-based workshop that allows our students to practice presenting for about seven minutes in front of our group of scholars about anything they wanna talk about that has sort of worldwide significance. But it allows our scholars to, you know, really work in English on presenting in front of a, a group of people. So I think that's that's one of those skill building exercises we do across across the time. And then there's an for the PhD students, there's another opportunity at the end of their time with us that allows them to talk for three minutes. It's a competition, but three minutes about their research to a lay audience, you know, so you, you'd have to be able to talk to your mother, your father, your grandparent about what you do in your research in a way that they can understand. So that's another way to really build those, uh, those skills in, in presenting in front of people, but also um, it helps you distill down what, what you've done over the last five years in, in your research for a PhD. There are leadership opportunities inside of the academy. We have a, an academy at the McDonald Academy Panel of Scholars, the MAPS team, if you will. Um, and they do a variety of events um, 
throughout the year that really do continue to build that community. I mentioned before the DC cohort trip, we also have a New York cohort trip. And the idea of those trips is, is twofold. It's to allow us to take our scholars to parts of the United States that maybe they have only heard about, um, made assumptions about, you know, haven't experienced. So in DC, we talk a little bit more about uh, American politics. We talk about think tanks and the role of that in policy building. We usually meet with somebody in the media. We will try to meet with different uh, congressional members to get, get that experience. Um, and then the other side of that is you're traveling with two cohorts. So the first years go with the second years and you get to know that cohort when you're traveling together. Now on the opposite year, um, we go to New York City and that's a little bit more about uh, finance, culture. Uh, we do throw in some media there as well. There's a lot, you know, we went to the New York Times the last time we were there. Um, and we we throw in a Broadway show, actually. I think we saw the Harry Potter show the last time, the last time we were there. But again, that's community building, that's getting to know your scholars and also really experiencing part of the, the United States that maybe you, you hadn't experienced before. Um, and then every other year we host, um, I mentioned briefly that research component. We really work with faculty from Washington University and around the world on developing new international collaborative research. And um, every other year we do a, a research symposium and invite those collaborators in to talk about the projects that we've helped support through our C grant funding. So you're asking yourself, what are we seeking in a scholar? What are they looking for? Um, the three main pillars of the McDonald Academy are global mindset, leadership, and community. So I've talked a lot about community and how we work to develop that community inside the McDonald Academy through different activities and experiences. The leadership component comes in the form of that first year leadership seminar. Um, it comes in the form of additional opportunities to meet with, with different leaders, to listen to different lectures. And then inside, um, the program, we really challenge our scholars to take a leadership position somewhere in the, in the university or in the community. And lastly, the global mindset is really to learn and listen to people that are from different parts of the world um, and to really be able to, you know, understand a different perspective um, with respect, uh, grace, you know, kindness. Um, so, th so those are really the three things. And to the extent that you can demonstrate how you might fit into, you know, all three of those pillars through your application is going to be a key part of, um, of finding success. What type of scholar are you? So I haven't talked much about this. We have three different types of scholars and this sounds very, this is you know, very uh, interesting way to think about this. But when we did, when we started 18 years ago, we started with a small group of partner institutions that we said, well, if you uh, send your scholars, you know, once they've finished their degree at your institution and want to do a degree at Washington University, you'll be considered a partner scholar. We have grown that partner network um, over time with more than 30 institutions that are considered partners in, in the McDonald Academy. Um, what we started to hear a few years ago is about these amazing international students that were not from a partner institution and how do we, you know, how can they join in the Academy? And we said, well, okay, let's think about this. And we came up with this, this idea of global scholars um, so that we could bring in conversations and cultures from other parts of the world where we may not be ready to, to have a full partner with the McDonald Academy, but we want to hear from them. So we have, we have scholars from, you know, Ecuador, from Ethiopia, um, different parts of the world that we, Venezuela, we might not have had a partner uh, there, you know, a partner institution there, but we have great scholars from there. Um, and then we have U.S. scholars because we didn't want to, uh, we didn't, we didn't want to have an international institution inside of a U.S. institution without that that collaboration across. So we we made very sure that we 
select US scholars in that so that we have a really well-rounded community and conversation. So uh, the cohort, last thing there, the cohort composition is about 60% uh, partner scholars and 40% from the, the US and global. And we take about 20 to 25 scholars each, uh, each and every year. So how do you apply? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you apply to a specific graduate or professional pr degree program at Washington University. So engineering, law, medicine, social work, anything across the seven, soon to be eight schools we have here at Washington University and also apply to the McDonald Academy. Now you do not have to wait to find out if you've gotten in to your graduate or professional program at WashU to apply. And in fact, I encourage you to apply to the degree program and then apply to the McDonald Academy. Um, we actually work with the programs to figure out who is being admitted um, before we move them through our application system. But our deadline is January 31st, so you don't wanna miss the deadline waiting to hear from, from your program. The requirements um, are fairly straightforward, a personal essay, a video, a video introduction, and a recommendation letter. I'll talk a little bit about what those components are in uh, the next slide. And then our website is absolutely chock full of information, examples, more details, more Q&A um, if you're looking to find additional information there. So let me talk about the personal essay. Um, it says a thousand words or less. You know, we're looking to try to get a perspective from you. Why do you want to be a McDonald scholar? How would being a McDonald scholar help your professional uh, career and or help your country? Um, how do you contribute to the goals of the academy? Think back to the three pillars. How do you fit inside of that? Uh, some of the tips that we've we've heard and created throughout the years is, you know, highlight the ways that you've shown determination and followed through on academic, professional, or personal goals, right? What is, what does that uh, look like? And then um, how will you use and what you learn in the McDonald Academy and in your studies to benefit your community? So how will you take everything um, that you've, you've learned at the McDonald Academy, the community that you've built and go out and do great things? So, that's the personal essay. Um, the video introduction, it's a way to convey who you are beyond the written word. It allows us to learn a little bit about your personality. Um, you know, it's a little more engaging than, than an essay. Um, so choose a prompt from, from one of the options. Um, you, you can all read, but I'll tell you anyway. Tell us about your unique talent. Um, discuss a facet of your personality or share an experience that is meaningful to you. Um, I do want to say, keep in mind, we want to learn a little bit about you, but we're also trying to understand how you would fit inside the cohort of the, you know, that we're developing in the McDonald Academy. So what makes you unique, but also what do you bring to the table? We are not looking for high production value videos. It's not really about how good you are with iMovie or any of these other um, platforms. We just want to we we want to get to know you for under two minutes, right? So ensure your face is in full view of the camera. If if we can't hear you, we can't hear you. So make sure that your responses are audible and that your volume is at, is at a good level so that we can hear you. Do not exceed two minutes. Um, we have more than 750 applications every year. Um, so do the math on that really quick. We can actually uh, watch more than two minutes on anyone's uh, video. And then the quality of your responses is much more important than the, the production quality. So having background music actually might not help you if we can't hear what you're saying. So little, little things like that, just keep it clean. Um, you know, keep it easy. And then let me talk about the letter of recommendation. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, I already had to get two or three letters of recommendation for my degree program. Why do they need one more? Well, we're looking for something different. We let the schools work on the academic part of it. They are making an assessment on how well you they think you can uh, 
perform, I guess, academically, right? That's their job. Our job is to look at the softer skills. Our job is to see how you fit inside the cohort. Our job is to see how, how you can develop as a leader. So our recommendation is looking for somebody who can speak to that. I don't necessarily, if, if you're, your boss in your lab can speak to who you are as a leader, by all means, ask them to do it. But if they send me a letter that tells me how great you are at, at running experiments, that doesn't really tell me much about how, how you will be as a leader in, in the world. So think about that. It is very specific in that, um, you know, because we're looking for something different than a, a typical a academic uh, recommendation. Um, so only completed applications will be reviewed. We can't actually, you know, look at any applications that are missing components. The, the recommendation, sorry, the recommender has until February 14th to upload the letter of recommendation. So again, our application closes on January 31st. That gives them two extra weeks. So if you have, you know, put your application in at the last minute on the last day, there is still time for your recommenda recommender to put in their recommendation. I do advise you to have a conversation with your recommender before you click submit on, um, on our application because that submit button automatically pushes an email out to that recommender. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to submit my application and then call up my recommender and you know, have a conversation, they've already gotten an email from, from us and hopefully they have, um, you know, not deleted it. So we'll begin evaluations as soon as February 15th. We will interview candidates in early March and we will make our selections um, by the end of March. We understand that most programs have an April 15th response date. We adhere to that. Um, we really try to, to make sure we're lining up with these programs so that you have the most information as you you make your decision where you're going to graduate school. And as I mentioned, about 20 scholars per uh, academic year are selected. So the how to apply piece, um, we've just switched over to a new application system. So depending on the program, kind of depends on what your pathway is to the academy. Um, on our website, there is a specific area for each of the programs. So if you're in an eligible program, um, the ones listed here are actually in the portal that you're applying to that degree program. So it's, it's just go into the fellowship page and you can apply right there. If you are in an MBA program or the JD law program, you have to opt in through their program application, and then you receive login credentials to, to do our application. Um, if you're in SOFIS, um, there's not an application opt-in opt feature, but once you submit, if eligible, you'll automatically receive an email with these credentials. Um, I will mention briefly uh, the medical, the med, med school, the straight, uh, MD program, sorry, I said doctor of medicine in my head. Um, the MD program has a, a separate pathway as well, but there is a pathway to, to apply if you are in that. So if there's a program that's not listed and it's also not listed on our website, you can of course reach out to us. Um, I encourage you to go to mcdonald.wustl.edu slash apply before January 31st so that you can see, you know, some of the same information, some additional Q and A, um, things like that. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. We have a lot of content out there that will really help you get a feel for who we are and what we do. Um, so I encourage you to look at that and I'm gonna open it for questions. I know Latanya that you have been uh, answering some questions on the fly. So I thank you for that. Um, let me open a couple of the questions. I sent and... a video to you live, so I don't know how you can see them on your end, but. I know, so I see open. Um, 
Oh, I see. Latanya is going to answer this question live. All right. Um, so how does the committee decide on the candidates shortlisted for interview as well as those who are selected as scholars? So that is um, an, an excellent question. Actually, we do talk to the departments um, in terms of you know, how, how they think you're going to perform academically. And we will talk to them in terms of, you know, what their recruitment strategies are, um, who they're very interested in, uh, you know, in, in joining the academy. So they could, they have a, a, a way that they can, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I haven't had enough coffee, um, but where they can recommend somebody for the McDonald Academy. And then we, take all of those candidates and we look at them in terms of uh, the different disciplines, in terms of the different areas of the world. So we are trying to build a cohort that is very cross-disciplinary and from different parts of the world. So um, it's this is not going to be the definitive answer that, that you're looking for, um, but we are really trying to balance across the different uh, schools here at WashU and the different disciplines you know, available. So for example, we can't have, we might get a lot of candidates from the masters of social work. Um, you know, we, we can't have 10 people from, from that program because it would put us out of balance for that. So that, uh, that's my answer on that one. Um, question two, how do you prepare for the interview? I actually love this question. Chris Ann, you're really you're uh you're killing it on the questions. How do you prepare for the interview portion of the admissions process in the event in the event that you're shortlisted? So we do interview about 60 candidates for you know about 20 uh, positions at the McDonald Academy. Um, you know I think think through the materials that you submitted. Think through the pillars for the McDonald Academy, and then just be yourself. Honestly, I think that's my 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 best advice is to be yourself. It is a panel interview. And I say this not to, to make you nervous. We actually bring in three candidates and three um, of us from Washington University. Um, and then you go into Zoom rooms and you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with each of us. So it's not a competitive interview situation. It actually allows you to have a conversation with a faculty member or somebody from my team and and I sit on all of the interviews. Um, so you're having like three different conversations inside of that. The reason we have six people join at the same time is it gives you a perspective of who might also be in the academy with you, right? You get, you get to look at a couple other, other scholars um, and see who might also get selected and then you get to meet three of us. So that is... My answer there, um, let's see. Is it a must that I have leadership skill before can I before I can apply for the 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 fellowship? Um, so let me first say it's a fellowship, not a scholarship. Why do I make that distinction? I make that distinction because um, in a scholarship, they're just saying we we think you're going to be really good at this. Here's some money to go get it get a degree with a fellowship there's actually a participation component. Um, we really need our scholars to all be, you know, coming together inside this community to make, to make it work. So um, do you have to have done something in leadership before? No. And, and in fact, I know it's not always, um, depending on what, what part of the world you're from, that might not be part of what your prior educational experience was. Um, and, and we really try inside of the interview uh, and, you know, obviously inside of the other materials you supply to tease those things out. For example, I had one year um, during an interview and somebody said, I've never done anything. I, okay, well, what do you like to do? And so we were talking a little bit and this candidate said, um, well, I play volleyball. And when I was in college, there wasn't a volleyball team. So I organized a volleyball team and, and you know, that that club has been going on since then. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's actually leadership. You know, you took the initiative, you got people to join you um, and you developed something that, that people enjoyed. So leadership can come from a variety of uh, perspectives. It doesn't always have to be, you know, like I was hired in as the leader of this group, or I was 
promoted as the manager of this. There are other ways to show your leadership. Um, ooh, okay, Diana, I'm, I'm gonna answer this as the best I can. Uh, more clarification on the stipend conjunction. I think you're talking about that being um, how it works with within the schools. So um, basically, the, the long and the short of it is we pay the, the majority of that stipend on behalf of Washington University. So that's why it's not stacked. So if the stipend for your program is $35,000, we pay $35,000. If the stipend is a little bit more, the school might have a little bit of that piece. Um, but at the end of the day, you're gonna get the stipend that, that you are due based on the program that you're in. Now for master's programs, I'll bring this one up because it is a little different. Um, for master's programs, they don't typically have a stipend. So if you're selected in a master's program as a McDonald fellow, a McDonald scholar, you actually will get a stipend and your tuition paid for. And in that case, you'll get whatever the base rate of the stipend is for the university, which I think is gonna be 35,000 next year. Um, so, and, and I think that follows the, the next one. Somebody said, is the stipend the same as what the school would give? Yes, um, we, we do match that. Um, okay, Latanya, are there any others that you, yes, you have. Um, what makes a strong application? What specifics are the application team looking for in a strong application? And what are the aims and the vision of, of the academy? So, um, I'm going to read my vision statement because it's right over here. Um, our vision is to launch the next generation of global leaders addressing humanity's most pressing challenges through international education and scholarship. So that's the vision. Um, and as I said, the mission is twofold, right? We're, we're building, um, we're attracting scholars from around the world, um, top, top scholars from around the world um, to watch you to help them develop as leaders while they're getting their degree and then facilitate collaborative international research. So um, what makes a strong application is how you build into that. How can you demonstrate that what, what you have and who you are and, and who your, your degree is going to let you be fits inside of those three pillars and inside of that vision. Um, Let's see, uh, the professor of interest, I'm gonna answer this one, even though you didn't mention this one, Latanya, but it, but this comes up. Um, can my professor of interest at WashU help me with the letter of recommendation, although I have not received the offer officially? So that isn't actually, that is a good question. Um, and the reason I would caution you not to do that is they don't know you very well. Now, if you have a demonstrated uh, relationship with this particular professor, fantastic. That that would that would be good. But if if you're just developing that relationship through, you know, a set of of, of email correspondences and trying to get into WashU, that person's not really going to be able to speak on who you are as a, a leader or a potential leader. Um, if I'm applying to different qualified PhD program at WashU, should I submit an application in the portal of each program? Latanya, I'm going to lean on you for this one. I think the answer is yes. How do um, was this the question about whether they should um, do a separate submit, application for each submit a separate application for each program? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, uh, unfortunately, applications across programs don't tie together. So if you were not accepted, say you applied to um, a biomedical program and you did not get an offer but you apply to mathematics and you did get an offer, if you don't have a McDonald Academy application in the mathematics program, then we will assume that you didn't get any offers. So we- I know, so yeah, so bear with us. I, I'm gonna say bear with us. Um, I Ideally, it, it's, your, it's a copy paste function. Mm -hmm. um, in, inside of those, you know, multiple programs. But at the end of the day, it's a visibility thing, as Latanya said to us, if we don't, we don't know what we don't know, right? So if you get into one program, 
and don't get into another, but the one you didn't get into is the one that had the McDonald application. We don't know to consider you for the one that you did get in. So just help us help you, right? right. Um, use the same information us. for both applications. We don't need new recommenders or new video. If right. You just use the same information for all yeah. McDonald's yeah. applications. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And even... Um, I mean, I'm sure if we run into issues of the recommender doesn't want to keep putting it in, I think we might be able to have the grad app team copy that letter of recommendation over. Um, uh, okay, I'm applying for a PhD in chemistry. There's a particular professor I want to work with if I'm getting selected for the, the fellowship. Um, uh, can I work, still work with that particular person? Um, so that that is an excellent question. Um, the short answer is yes. You can work with whomever you want want to. And and one of the things actually that um, can be a benefit for PhD students with the McDonald Fellowship is they get a little more choice in who they're they're working with because they bring the stipend with them um, for, through the McDonald Academy. So. Um, Working the the mentorship that I spoke of is not necessarily academic me mentorship. I think you will find that inside of your departments. The mentorship that we're talking about is more of that community development, helping you find um, your place here at, at Washington University in St. Louis. You know, how do I go to the grocery store? Who, you know, who do I talk to if I have this kind of a, a, a challenge? So that's the kind of more soft skills mentorship outside of your discipline that, that we offer. Um, there is not an application fee to apply to the McDonald Academy. I think inside the programs, I'm sure that there are application fees. Um, I think there's a possibility for some of them to be waived, but that's all department and program at programmatically specific, but there's no fee to apply to the McDonald Academy. Um, so in reviewing the McDonald Scholarship Fellowship application, do you review other graduate program materials like the department personal statement in addition to departmental recommendation letters? Sometimes, I'm, I'm gonna say sometimes. Um, if we're looking at a couple candidates from the, you know, perhaps the same discipline from the same program. I'll use biomedical engineering, I think, because Latanya brought it up. Um, if I have two candidates from biomedical engineering and I'm looking to get more information, I will dig into their uh, graduate program application materials just to get a little more perspective. I might read some of the recommendation letters. I might read the personal statement because, in you know, inside of those personal statements, I'm sort of getting a little bit a uh, better view of who you are as, you know, as a student and as a potential leader. So, so the answer is sometimes we do. Um, uh, somebody is asking if we accept scholars with I Iranian nationality. Um, I think this has come up with, uh, uh, what's the other country that comes up? Palestine? No. Anyway, um, the, the long and the short of it is, is yes. If, you know, if you get accepted into WashU and you know can get can get your visa to to come here, um, you're absolutely, you know, able to join the academy. We've actually had an Iranian uh, scholar in the past. Uh, scrolling through, um, I'm gonna. There's one in here that Latanya didn't uh, mention, but I meant I'm gonna give you an answer on the recommender. Um, your recommender should have uh, some knowledge of who you are as, as a leader or potential leader. Um, ideally, there's somebody that you worked for, um, a professor maybe that you did a TA role for in the past, somebody that, that knows you. It's probably not a colleague it's probably not somebody who is on the same level as you in the org chart, um, but you know it's somebody who's going to be able to really speak to what your potential uh, can be. So, um, anyway, uh, 
And let me, yeah. So sorry, Latanya just uh, asked me to remind you, you have to have a corresponding graduate school application to be considered. If you start, if you send us a message and say, I can't apply to the McDonald Academy, that is probably because you have not applied to a graduate or professional uh, PhD or professional deg degree program at WashU. It is that that opens up the application for the McDonald Academy. It, we cannot open, you know, we cannot get you into grad school at WashU. It, it is, you know, applying to grad school at WashU and then applying to the McDonald Academy. Um, it, it doesn't work in, in the reverse. Um, uh, Latanya, I am going to ask you this one. I think it's interesting on the video introduction because I know we typically have some issues with private videos. I think we want them. Okay. Yeah, the number of public. views does not matter. They need right. to be public so that we can click through and, and see them. Um, and just keep in mind that Laura and I aren't the only ones reviewing your videos. Um, we have two other interviewers that will also review all of your materials. So anyone who clicks on the link needs to be able to um, gain access to it. If you have privacy concerns um, or you don't have, or you don't have access to a platform that will allow you to do a private video, um, then some people use Google Drive or a, a service like Google Drive where it's private, but it's not posted for everybody on YouTube to be able to access. So as long as you post it on a service like that and you share the link to anyone who clicks the link, can view, access the link, then that's perfectly fine too. It doesn't have to be YouTube or Vimeo or any of those other very public services. Um, thanks, Latanya. Uh, so somebody's asking about the McDonald Academy essay. Um, when I apply to the academy, would it, would I have more burden and load for taking sessions in the academy as well as research? So that is a good question. Um, I mean, the short answer is is yes. Uh, in terms of you know, we want our scholars to participate. Um, you will have an extra class that first semester. It is a seminar style. It's 90 minutes a week. We do expect you to show up. We do expect you to do the assignments, but the assignments, let me give you an example on one of the assignments. You know, the assignments might be a five minute survey about what's your motivation to lead? What kind of leader are you? And you can go through and, and complete that pretty quickly. Um, sometimes we'll have a weekly challenge that that says, you know, go have a coffee with with somebody in your cohort and tell us what you learned. So these are very short assignments. There are a couple, are there a couple? Uh, there's one or two longer form assignments. The whole semester culminates in, in your leadership vision document, which is basically how you plan to develop as a leader over your time at WashU. At the end of the day, the, the work that you do in the academy ideally helps you set you up for success um, as you work your way through your graduate degree. So yes, there's more work to to do some of these soft skills in addition to your your lab work. We have seen many a PhD student navigate this um, very easily. I hope that answers that question. Um, uh, how much overlap can and should there be between the personal essay and the graduate school personal statement in terms of career goals, specific leadership experiences? That's an excellent question. Um, I, I mean, it kind of depends on what your story is and and what you're what you're saying inside of the grad school application. If your grad school personal statement, has a lot to do with leadership experience and you know some of those specific things that you mentioned. I think the overlap would be pretty high. If um, if it doesn't, if you know you're trying to get into neuroscience and they want to hear what papers you've done and how you're going to change the the face of neuroscience, that's not going to be quite as applicable. So that that overlap would be much lower, and you'd be writing two very distinct essays. So I think it depends on really what program you're looking to join and what you're putting in that grad school personal statement. 
I mean, if if you're if it's elegant enough and you could do the same statement for both and answer, you know, the the prompts appropriately, go for it. Uh, let's see. So what are the expect expectations for third, fourth, and fifth years participating in the academy? That's an excellent question. So in years three and four, um, we really try to keep our scholars engaged. These are really tough years for PhD students. They can be a little bit lonely. You're starting to really focus on the research that you're doing. You feel a little bit on an island um, in terms of you know what you're working on. Um, those would be the best opportunities to stay involved in the in this community because you'll start to realize that a lot of people are having the same feelings that you have. Um, you know, what am I, I? I can't figure out my research question, or you know, I'm writing, uh, I'm I'm writing, 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 and it's just so solitary. Um, you know, can can we meet and and sit and write together? We challenge our third and fourth your students to take a leadership position um, at that point to really start to, to build on that leadership experience. Um, with our fifth years, there's a very small uh, communications piece, which is that PhD in 3D, which is the three minute thesis competition. Um, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, but it allows our, our senior scholars to come back and talk about their research in a fun, you know, in a fun way. Um, we like for our scholars to come and 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 stay involved. I think we basically, um, you know, if we don't see you inside of a semester, we're gonna ask where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing. Um, so we are running out of time. Let me scroll through a couple other questions. Hey Laura, can I can I make just one real quick announcement? So sure. I keep this question. Um, I've gotten a question several times concerning the video essay recommender um, and the other materials that are required for the McDonald Academy. Um, we realize that sometimes if you wait a little while, you might make a better video or write a better essay. Um, however, we get about, we get over a thousand applications. <laughs> so in the interest of time, it's not always possible to go back and upload a new essay or put in a new video link. So we right. reserve that feature. Um, if your video link no longer works for whatever reason, you can't fix it by simply um, resetting the privacy policy, um, then we'll update your video link for you. Um, if your essay, for some reason, you uploaded, you know, an essay that wasn't, um, you uploaded the wrong file by mistake and then submitted your application and realized, um, you know, you attached something that wasn't an essay at all, then we can fix that. But if it's simply you decided to write a better essay or do a better video, um, we really ask that don't submit your application until you are ready, completely ready. Um, submitting your application now versus January 31st, there really is no difference because we don't begin reviewing those applications until February. We start reviewing all together. There's no um, early review on our part. So you can always wait to hit submit later. Um, however, if you have a technical issue, you can, and I'll drop the link in the um, chat, you can fill out a form um, for any technical issues uh, with your recommendation video or any other components of the application. Thanks, Latanya. Welcome. Um, and it get, that gave me a minute to scroll through a couple uh, <laughs> questions. Um, somebody asked if there's an age limit. No, there there isn't. Um, somebody else was asking is how can we connect with current scholars? Um, to hear their perspectives. I would say uh, you guys are so well-versed in social media. Um, I would check out the scholars that have been uh, ahead of you in, in McDonald Academy and they are on our website. Um, and I'd reach out to them, you know, via, uh, via whatever social media platform that you would like. Um, we have had law students, this particular person was asking about law, we've actually had quite a few law students. Um, in fact, uh, one of our uh, Brighton Alumni Award winners was a law student here. Um, so there, in many, 
many, maybe most cases, there's probably somebody who has been, um, who's tr trodden the pathway that you're looking to, to embark on, um, that you could reach out to. Uh, the time commitment, uh, you know, honestly, I, I, I could bring back that slide, um, that we were talking through earlier, the different things that we have, but we try to have, uh, at least once a month, some activity, it could be a lecture, it could be, you know, the second year is doing their presentation. Um, it, it could be, let's see, you know, the symposium happened in October. We'll have a, a variety of different ways to connect. Um, I really would like, you know, our scholars to be at two to three events per semester. I mean, that would be um, every, you know, everything that's required. And then, you know, maybe one, one or two non-required events, like a monthly lunch, because that's the way you get to know people. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, somebody was asking, they've worked closely with, for four years with somebody, a research assistant who's not yet, uh, doctor can they use the person as a recommendation recommender I would say if they were your boss absolutely right if they had some sort of way that they um guided you and helped you build your career absolutely you know uh absolutely um the recommender does not need to be an academic um the recommender could like I said could have been your you know your boss at your uh at your internship or you know, some other job that you've had. Um, uh, somebody asked if all McDonald scholars take part in international research during their experience at WashU. Um, it's certainly an option. Uh, all of our scholars get $2,000 per year um, if they put in a proposal that could be used for a variety of things. One could be uh, conferences, one could be research, and one might be, depending if you're a partner scholar, doing some recruitment back at your alma mater. So um, do you have to, to participate in inter international research? You don't. Do we highly recommend it, especially for our U.S. scholars? We absolutely do. Uh, let's see. Um, we, let's, I'm just, you know, scrolling through. The webinar is recorded. Um, I think, Latanya, will we, trim it and post it on our website? Uh, yes, we will. And I dropped that in the chat that we will also share a compiled list um, of the questions and answers that were not addressed um, during this call in, in about mm, 24, 48 hours. <laughs> okay, um, awesome. Um, is there anything else, Latanya, that you saw that maybe I could answer? Um, boy, I think, I think I got most of them. I don't think there's anything, um, that we have not addressed yet. And I would say for my, for my friends that have their hands raised, is it possible for you to just put that into the Q and A feature? So I know what your, um, questions might be. I think Anthony might have asked one on the housing. Um, so we do have two units that have, I think, 11 apartments e each. Um, and if you get selected to to live inside the, the McDonald Academy building, we actually have an annex right next door as well. Um, there is sometimes a small housing subsidy to make sure that it's market rate. Um, you do not get the housing subsidy if you're not in one of the apartments affiliated with with the academy, but that probably means that you wanted to find somewhere that was, you know, met your needs in a different way. Um, let's see, let's go down. Uh, oh, Latanya, so we do get this question a lot. The recommend recommender doesn't have a work email and only has a personal. Um, I ideally we'd rather have the uh, a professional email if that's at all possible. Um, 
but I don't know that there's a full restriction on that. Correct, Latanya? Uh, there is no full restriction. It is a preference that we have the work email, but in cases where um, just this week something happened, someone was, their recommender is retired. So they only sure. have a personal email address. So that's perfectly fine to give us the personal in those cases. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, are international students who completed undergraduate education in the U U.S. welcome to apply? Um, they are. They are welcome to ap apply. I think in those situations, we are really looking at um, sort of what what that cultural background that you represent uh, that you represent is it's a, it's an interesting pathway. It, um, it's not quite as straightforward as some of the uh, the other pathways, but we have had scholars who have uh, been international and gone to a domestic institution and then get selected as the academy in the McDonald Academy. Um, Somebody is asking about uh, how accommodating the fellowship is if the application has a dis with a disability. Um, I I think to the extent um, we we have actually have a, a scholar right now whose all his research is on disability, um, and and he he has one himself. I actually don't know what what. It, it is, but um, uh, I, I don't think he has had any issues with accommodations in in the past. Um, I think to the extent that we can use Zoom to, you know, facilitate any any challenges that we might have with with speech or hearing, um, hopefully we can figure that out through through technology. Um, uh, somebody's asking if the funding from McDonald is different from that of WashU. Are they the same? I'm not sure. I totally understand, but, um, they work in conjunction with each other. They work together so that they are not added on. So if you are to get a PhD offer from the university, you would be funded. You would have, you know, your, your, tuition covered, you would have your stipend. If you get selected for the McDonald Academy, we just take over that, that stipend uh, and tuition uh, and, we, and we pay that instead. So they work together. Um, uh, so somebody's asking a very, this is a very good question. Um, Diana, uh, applying to uh, a later, round application for any of the, so law, MBA, anything that has an application deadline after April 15th, and will that affect your, your chances of being selected for the fellowship? Um, that's tricky because we don't know about you until after we're through our process. I would say if you can push your application in sooner, for any of those programs that have rolling admissions, that would be my suggestion because we have to see that corresponding application before we can consider you. So if you had applied to, um, if you applied to the MBA program on April 15th, our application will already be closed. So you, you'd have a problem. If you apply before January 31st, it opens up the application uh, for the McDonald Academy, then you can apply apply to us as well. So it's really, it's chicken and the egg there. It's, um, you don't, we don't know what we don't know. And so if you're not in the system, we can't consider you. Um, so somebody says, do all the continents have an equal share in the, in the scholarship? I'm gonna again say fellowship there, or does it depend on the number of scholars? It really depends on, um, who else has applied? Uh, what schools are being represented? Like I said, if, for example, we had, you know, all the the people from the continent of Africa only applied to one program at WashU, 
Well, it's going to be really hard for me to, to cover many other countries inside of the continent of Africa if they've only applied to one degree program. Now, that doesn't typically happen, and we are allowed, we are able to then balance across different um, disciplines and, and continents. Um, uh, the, the stipend for the next academic year, I believe, is $35,000. Um, applications are not really evaluated on a rolling basis. We tend to wait until January 31st when we have everything in, and then we start to evaluate them around February 15th as we start to get a look into which uh, potential candidates have gotten accepted into their program. Um, uh, So somebody's asking, this is a tech question about going back and, you know, not having submitted and, and wanting to change out materials. I think if you haven't submitted, you can still change your materials out, like your essay or your uh, video. But um, once you've submitted, I'm not sure. It, it's not as easy to change those. Um so somebody, this is a good question. I think this will be the last one because I we do have to kind of wrap up. Um, somebody said, what happens when an applicant already has some offer of a partial scholarship from WashU? Does it affect their probability of being selected for McDonald's? And, and I'm going to say sometimes that can actually help. Um, if you received a, a partial scholarship from the school, um, you know, that means that they're really looking to recruit you. And that can be an indicator to us um, in in that part of the process. So it doesn't, it, it does, it certainly doesn't negatively affect your ability to be a McDonald's scholar. Okay. Um, I am going to say um check out the website, go to McDonald m-c-d-o-n-n-e-l-l -L dot w-u-s-t-l dot e-d-u forward slash apply forward slash f-a-q-s. That is where a lot of answers, um, we've tried to anticipate as much as possible um, in terms of our presentation and our, our website frequently asked questions. Um, I feel like we've answered quite a few here today. So I'm hoping that we've gotten you in um, uh, it, you know, in a good spot to apply. We will have another Q and A session in January. So if um, if you haven't gotten the answer in from another method and you can't find it on the frequently asked questions, you are welcome to join again in January. Um, and you know, and put your question out at that time. Um, we will, as Latanya mentioned, compile a lot of these questions and either post them on the website or push them back out to uh, to this group because I think um, I think we all we captured all of the email addresses on the registration. Um, okay, my friends, thank you so much. Um, uh, Somebody's asking a follow-up on the continental representation. Is the 20 to 25 scholars that you select per year dependent on representation from each continent or from each program or total representation? You know, it is a it is a big math equation where we look at who is inside the academy um, in any given time period. So I mentioned there are 93 in resident scholars. We target around 100, and we do like to have a pretty decent balance across continents, across, across disciplines. So um, I don't have a very specific, like we have to have this many from South America, we have to have this many from uh, you know, Europe, or this many from Australia, or Africa, or China, or whatever it is. We do just try to really balance it across to make sure the conversation we're having throughout the academy, throughout all of the members of the academy is, is pretty robust and inclusive. So um, that is, uh, that's what I know, my friends. All right. Have a great day. If it's, if you're up late, have a good sleep and we will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us. And um, I look forward to receiving your applications. Thanks. Thank you.